In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make these cute little gift bags. Um, the materials list and cutting instructions are all in the description box below the video and the materials list is for both of the gift bags. I'm going to show you how to make the large one. They're quilted, uh, they're padded, they're lined, they're luxurious and if you wanted to, if you wanted to kind of keep what's inside there a little bit secret, you could fasten over the top with either a magnetic snap or maybe a strip of velcro. Let's get sewing. I have two outer pieces, I've got two lining pieces and on the wrong side of the outer pieces I've already fused my fusible fleece. I do think you need some kind of interfacing on the wrong side of this just to give the bag a little bit more sturdiness. So it could be a foam, it could be um, a firm or medium interfacing. I just, I just like using the fleece, it's perfect I think for a project like this. I've also cut bias binding to go around the top. Now this takes up quite a bit of fabric because for a bias binding um, you're cutting on a 45 degree angle. So in effect you're taking one piece of fabric and literally cutting it from corner to corner. So there is a little bit of waste there. If you prefer to buy pre-bought, if you can find a colour that matches your fabric, then that may be a little bit more affordable for you. So I've cut this, um, I've cut two pieces and I need to join those together. I'll do those shortly. But the first thing I'm going to do is to quilt the outside, which is another reason I think why the, um, uh, the fleece is quite nice because you get a depth to your stitches. And all I'm going to do is to draw with an erasable pen lines two inches apart and then I'm going to stitch over the top of them. Now I've used um, a heat erasable pen. Uh, if you're doing that, always check your fabric first just to make sure that it's not going to stain because sometimes I can do that. Um, but water erasable, fine, air erasable. Just remember not to use um, an iron over your water and your heat erasable. Uh, sorry, your water or your air erasable ink because that, that could make it permanent. So again, literally the stitching over every one of these lines. Now because I've used a heat erasable ink pen, I can just now waft my iron over the top of the lines and they'll disappear. Then of course we'll do the same with the opposite side of the bag. Now you may want to do, not want to quilt it at all. It doesn't need quilting, I just, I just like the texture. Um, or you could maybe do a little bit of stippling or if you have a design on your fabric that you could outline then maybe you could even use a little bit of free motion embroidery and just go around some of those designs. Now I'm going to cut out the shape of the bag and I'll do that on the lining purely because it's easier to mark because I haven't got the fleece on the back. So I'm going to fold in half and just crease to find the centre mark I'm going to take my plate so this is a ten and a half inch plate and place it centrally over the top of the bag and I need to make sure these distances are the same so you could measure that just to make sure so I know that plate is sitting right in the centre of my fabric and then I'll draw around the top and when I come to five inches along the side which is about halfway down my plate I'm just going to draw a line straight across So that's going to be the shape of the top of my bag. So I can put this together with my lining piece. It's 
line those up and I'm going to cut out the shape there so I'm cutting through both pieces you can do them individually if you find it easier and just make a nice curve and you love the sound of the scissors cutting And then I'll use this as a template to cut the same shape from both of my there we go from both of my outer pieces. And I'm going to put one outer piece and one lining piece right sides together. And we'll have a few pins in there to keep that in place. One at the top. Then I'm going to take my smaller circle and this is what's going to create the handle. So again, let's measure and mark the center point again. So I'm ten and a half, so that will be five and a quarter. You could fold this in half and crease it if you prefer, just to make sure you find the exact centre. Then we're going to sit our circle template straight over the top, and that is going to be two inches from the top of my bag. And I'm going to sew through all layers all the way around the circle. So use quite a small stitch now. I'm using 2.2 on my machine. And literally take your time and sew around in the circle. Try and keep this nice and smooth because this is going to form the shape of your handle. So if you've got a wobbly stitch, you're going to have a wobbly, a wobbly shaped handle. Then you'll take a pair of very sharp scissors and I'm going to cut quite close to the edge so maybe an eighth of an inch or two millimeters from the stitch line just on the inside that'll cut down on the bulk inside the handle Then we're going to push the lining through the hole and press. So I'm just pressing it away from the seam at the moment. I find that's easier. Push the whole thing through to the inside. I'm just going to pull this back so that the seam is sitting right on the edge. So a little bit of steam and maybe some um, spray starter or best press is going to help make that seam nice and crisp. So keep it flat, take your time. And then we're going to top stitch all the way around the edge.
snip away my loose thread and then we'll repeat with the other two pieces. Then we're going to take the two outer pieces, pop them right sides together and move the lining out of the way and we're going to sew around the bottom three sides. And then take the lining pieces and fold these right sides together. Let's move the handle inside so that's out of the way. Just line up the edges here. And then we're going to sew again all the way around but this time we're going to leave a turning gap in the bottom of about three or four inches just enough so that you can get your hand through to turn it the right side out going to take a little ruler and draw a box shape in each corner and this is going to be two inches from the edge of the fabric and this is what's going to make the base of the bag square And then let's cut out these shapes. Then with each one of the corners, we're going to pull the box shape open so that the side seam sits on top of the base seam and sew straight across here. And I'm just going to squish the seams in opposite directions as I reach them. same on the outer pieces so we've got a nice deep base in the bag now it's a really easy way of making your corners square and it's something that I do quite a lot it's a technique that I really like using on bags whether that's handbags or gift bags drawstring bags backpacks and there we go Then we're going to turn the whole thing through the turning gap that we left in the bottom. Sew the opening closed.
Then we're going to push the lining inside the bag, and you'll see the shape of the bag really starting to take shape now. Push out the corners. And then with the lining and the outer pieces, I'm going to just stitch those together before we put the bias binding on. That'll really finish it off, make it nice and neat. And it'll help to hold the layers of fabric together while we apply the bias binding as well. So I'm just going to sew close to the edge, so within the seam allowance, all the way around the edge. So now we're going to make the bias binding. And it does need to cut on, be cut on the bias because we're going to go around a curve. So bias binding has a little bit of give to it, which is why we cut it at a 45 degree angle. If you just cut this at a straight angle, then you may find that it puckers a little bit as you try to go around the curve. So I'm taking my two pieces of fabric. I did have to join these. You may not have to, depending on the, um, the width of the fabric that you're cutting it from. I'm just going to face these together at right angles like so, and then sew straight across, and that's going to give me a nice neat finish. My fabric strips are two inches wide, so my binding when it's finished will be half an inch wide, because in effect it's folded into four. So let's take the iron and just press that seam. And then we'll fold it over. If you have a bias binding maker, that's, uh, that's a very good idea to use it. This is only a short piece of binding, so I'm not too worried about that. And just to show that you don't need a bias binding maker to make bias binding. So I'm using, again, just some Best Press. It's a spray starch type of product and it'll help to keep the crease in the fabric. Um, don't rush out and buy it if you don't have any, but that's one of the occasions when it comes in useful. And I'm folding the whole thing in half lengthways. I think I'd buy a binding, or use my bias binding maker if I was doing this around a quilt, but for a short project like this, it's quite easy to do without that. And just be careful as you are ironing this, it's stretchy, we don't want to stretch it at this point, so just be aware that you don't need the stretch. Then we'll have both of the long sides to the centre. Like so. Then I'm going to fold it in half and press it again. That wasn't quite straight. Just do that little bit again. I'm just going to cut one end to make it straight and then fold the end over, line up the raw edge and I'm going to sew along this crease line. I find it easier um, not to pin with bias binding. Um, if you prefer to then that's fine but I, I don't tend to. So move that other handle out of the way. Needle down. And so, and again, take it easy around the curve. Don't stretch the bias binding any more than you need to. Um, 
yeah. because that will kind of make the top of the bag curl over a little bit, which is what we don't want. So again, just ease that around. Take your time and sew it in place. Now I'm going to hand sew this. This is entirely up to you. Um, I prefer to hand sew. I actually find it quicker in a way on smaller projects like this because it can be a little bit fiddly when you come to like the corners here to finish that off with a sewing machine. So I'm just going to take my needle and thread fold the binding over. I want to overlap the stitch marks here so I'm actually going to start with my needle in the seam allowance so the knot disappears and overlap the binding until it just covers the stitches and then we'll do a little slip stitch so into the fold of the fabric and then into the fabric directly underneath and then across again. Just catching the, the fold of the fabric and if you're using coloured thread, use the same colour as the binding. I know mine's both the same here, so it doesn't really matter. But if you've got a contrast colour of binding, it's only on the binding that you're going to see the stitches, if at all. So if you use the same colour thread, then that's not going to notice. Otherwise, something like a cream or a grey or a beige, a neutral colour, tends to stand out less than um, a stark colour, a black or a white. I'm just using cream thread. Try to keep your stitches about six millimetres or a quarter of an inch apart and we'll sew all the way around. Just to mention when you come to the corner pieces here, you may find that your fabric has little creases in the corner and that's really good. It, it automatically falls into um, like a mitered corner, so sew those in. Um, don't spend a lot of time trying to make those absolutely perfect so it's not too important but it is quite nice if you have a, a square corner there. I'm just going to knot off my thread at the end there, snip that off check for any little loose threads that need trimming. A final press. And that's another gift bag finished. So now you understand how to make them, you could experiment with making different sizes again. So a very small bag may be nice, uh, nice as a gift for jewellery and things like that. Or a very large bag doesn't even have to be a gift bag. You could use, use it as a laundry basket even. So I hope you enjoy your tutorial again. I'll be bringing you more, I'm sure, very soon. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.